So hi there guys and welcome to another video. Now this video is the first part of two, all about some software called Image. And so what's Image you may ask? Well Image is the underdog taking on the mighty giant, the titan, Google Photos. And Image is very, very similar. It's a clone of Google Photos. And in this first part, we're going to be comparing it to Google Photos and having a look at some of its features. Then in the second part, we're going to see how we can easily and quickly install it self-hosted on our Unraid server. Now I thought I'd do the videos this way round rather than the install first. So then that way you can check it out, see what it's all about, and then decide if it's something that would be a good fit for you that you want running on your server. Okay, well, so let's jump right in and take a look at it and get started. Okay, guys, so as you can see, Image is a photo application that allows you to store various photographs. And if we look on the left hand side, I've used 3.5 gigs of my 15, but luckily I can unlock a storage discount. Yay! And that discount, it will tempt me to be locked in to store my photos here forever. Now, yeah, of course I know this isn't Image. This is Google Photos. And I wanted to show you Google Photos before showing you Image. Now, up until a few years ago, we could upload as many photographs as we wanted into Google Photos, and it didn't count towards our Google Drive space. But nowadays it's different. When it was free, I'm sure they used all of our photos for machine learning, training facial recognition and object recognition. They needed those big data sets to be able to do that. Don't believe me? Well, let's look at this article from The Verge from back in November 2020, before the unlimited storage was taken away. Basically, this article tells us that we were improving the algorithms by manually going through our photos and correctly labeling them. But of course, if we ask Google now, does Google use my photos for machine learning purposes? And this guy here saying he's wondering whether that's a thing. But the answer, luckily from a diamond product expert. Now, I must admit this is the community forum, so it's not an official answer from Google. But when you do a Google search about that question, the first thing that comes up that's official, well, on the Google website is that actual answer. Coincidence? Maybe, maybe not. So let's look at the answer the expert gave. Basically, they're just saying, theoretically, Google can access the photos. Yeah, right, it's only theoretical. And it certainly wouldn't be done without explicit consent from the user. And then the answer's rounded off by saying Google uses AI to group the pictures. Well, that wasn't at all what the actual poster was actually asking. The question was, are the photos used to train AI? And if so, where did I agree to these terms and conditions? So the question wasn't answered. Then the thread was locked. And if you search the subject, it's the first official thing on google.com that comes up. And now with the days long behind us of being able to store as many photos as we like in Google Photos, to store more photos, we need to buy a subscription to a Google One account. And yes, it's cheap to start with. 100 gigs, I can start at 39 pence a month. But very soon, it's £1.59 a month. And if I wanted two terabytes, well, it's £7.99 a month. What this basically does is it traps us in this ecosystem and we've either got to keep paying forever a subscription to store our photos or one day we have to move them. So what I'm trying to say is why not make that one day moving them somewhere else, make that today and save all the money and all the hassle and wondering whether you trust Google and self-host something just as good as Google Photos. Now, the reason here I'm on Google Photos isn't just to say how bad I think Google is, in fact, I think the software is really good. And I'm sure all people using Google Photos are thinking, well, if I swap to something else, what am I going to be losing out on? And what's the experience going to be like? So I uploaded 256 photos into Google Drive and I uploaded the same 256 photos into Image. And yes, if you didn't notice, I've actually switched across to that now and it looks very, very similar. In fact, you could say it's pretty much a clone of Google Photos. On the left hand sidebar, we've got pretty much exactly the same things, except we don't have anything to actually buy prints. And the storage I've got, well, there's the whole amount of storage that I have on my Unraid server, and I won't need to be buying any more storage. Now, there's one thing I'm going to mention before we really go much further, is obviously if you're self-hosting all of your photos, you need to make sure that your system is really robust. 
And what I mean by that really is you have to have some sort of disaster recovery. Now yes of course, on Unraid you can actually lose a hard drive and rebuild the data that used to be on it. And that's the same with a Z pool as well. But what would happen if you accidentally deleted the data? Well, rebuilding from parity won't help you. And with a Z pool, yes, if you had a snapshot, then you could recover the data. But what if everything inside the server was broken? Unlikely? Well, what about a flood, a fire? It can happen. Well, I would need to have my most important data stored somewhere else as well. And as we're trying to get away from the cloud, having a backup server either in your own home or maybe at a family member's house, that's a really ideal solution. But yeah, it can be expensive to build another server. But remember, you don't need to store all of the data that you've got, just the precious stuff. So you might be able to get away with quite a small amount of storage just to back up the important things. And really, you don't need a whole backup server. You could just use an external USB hard drive, plug it in once a week and back up your most important data onto that. At least you've got another copy of it somewhere else. Now, another good way of keeping backups is to buddy up with a friend who's also got a server and send an encrypted backup to their server of your most important data. And then you let them do the same to your server, and then basically both of you have encrypted off-site backup should the worst happen. Now, for important data, it's better to use the 3 2, one rule, which basically stipulates you should always have three copies of your most important data. So you might think, well, that's a lot of work. I'll just probably leave my photos where they are with Google Photos. OK, so what happens if your Google Drive account gets hacked and all the data is deleted? Or Google has some sort of outage, their hardware is damaged and data is lost that way. It does happen, you know. A recent example of this was in 2019 when a power outage at an AWS data facility caused damage to hardware and basically people lost a lot of data. So basically, regardless of where your data is stored, always make sure you've got regular backups. Now, with my little disclaimer out the way, let's go back to Image. And yeah, I know all of you OG Unraid users out there, you already knew what I was saying anyway. But remember, there's always new people starting self-hosting and setting up their own servers who might not know what we already know. So looking at Image here, we can see it really does look nice. Very clean interface, looking very similar to Google Photos. Now, of course, Google Photos, you can upload photos from your phone. How about Image? Well, yep. We've got an Android app and an iOS app. So no problem there, exactly the same as Google Photos. So let's have a look at how image handles and displays photos. Now the reason there's no location on this image, even though it was taken with my cell phone, is because I run Graphene OS and it strips out the location data for privacy. That's what I prefer. But if you're using a normal phone, it would automatically put the location in if the device that took the photo supported that and embedded it into the picture. But just as you can in Google Photos, for photos that don't have a location, you can manually add one by clicking on a button and then choosing the location on the map. So let's look at the same photo on Google Photos. And we can see that everything is pretty much the same. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch across from each one back and forth. And what you'll notice is Google Photos says where the file was uploaded from and also the device that it was taken on comes underneath the date rather than further down as it is in image. But for all intents and purposes, they're exactly the same. OK, so I'm going to close this photo now. Now, the next part of the video, I wasn't sure whether to include it or not. And that's because remember when I said I uploaded 256 photos to both image and Google Photos? Well, when the photos uploaded, some sort of bug happened. Now, I know you're probably thinking, the bug happened when I uploaded them to Image, yeah? Well, no, the bug happened uploading those photos to Google Photos. On Google Photos, if I scroll up here, you're going to see a whole bunch of photos of when I made my office, and Google Photos has grouped them all together that they were taken on the 27th of January 2024. Now, that date is totally incorrect, and if I go and look at the same photos on Image, scrolling up here through those same bunch of photographs, we can see they're all split into date order. With the newest photograph being November 2022 and scrolling down through them in other months and date order. Now I don't know for sure, but I think the reason Google Photos bunch them all up like this incorrectly into the one wrong date is for some reason on these photos, it didn't use the creation date, 
it used either the last access date or maybe a modification date. Because when I uploaded all of these pictures, not only to Google Photos, but also to Image, in fact, they all came from the same folder, I'd copied them from elsewhere into a separate folder in order to upload them for this video. But the strange thing is all the photos from June 2021 and earlier, they were all dated correctly, so I'm not sure why it did it just to a certain few. So we can take it as a bit of a win for Image because Image didn't have this problem. But let's just take a look at one of the photos quickly. And if we pick one of these pictures here of my dog risking her life next to a pile of bricks, Google Photos thinks this photograph was taken 28th of January at 12.15 a.m. And jumping across to Image, let's find the same photograph. Okay, that's that one there. And if we look here, you see it's got the correct date and time and it's exactly the same file. Really don't know why it did that. Anyway, ignoring the messed up dates, let's go back to Google Photos. And obviously on the left, starting on the photos, scrolling down through, it shows all of the photos that you've got in date order. Oh my God, yeah, this photo here. That was a friend of mine, it's not my car. He sent me the photo saying, Ed, you won't believe how much furniture I fitted in my Mercedes. Now, at the time the photograph was taken, Marcin hadn't lived in the UK for very long. And I said to him, you do realize if the police had seen you, you kind of probably would have been in a bit of trouble. And he said, really? It was tied on very well with rope head and I went really slow. Anyway, to all English law enforcement watching, he's learned his lesson and he'll never do it again. And he knows now that it's a bad thing to do. Anyway, I'm getting a bit sidetracked. Let's go here and have a look on the left hand side at this button on Google Photos called Explore. You can see that Google Photos, what it will do is it uses AI to identify things and basically group them together based on what they are. And we can see here straight away, it doesn't always get it right. This folder here is called Cats, but the cover photo, well, that's definitely a dog. And if we have a look inside, well, pretty much everything's dogs, except one cat on the right, which really, you would have thought maybe it would have used that as the thumbnail, as opposed to just the first picture, which is a dog. Anyway, if we look at some of the other things here, you know, it has got the dogs all correct here. There's dogs. Obviously, all of these are dogs. Uh, my mum's front room. I'm not sure why it quite thinks that's a dog, but it is nice to be able to have things grouped together based on what they are. You know, this here, obviously, it's seen the flowers in the background next to that Gen 8 micro server. But if we go across to image and we click explore here, well, unfortunately, the only thing it can pick up at the moment is people. It doesn't do objects. But Image is under heavy development, so I'm sure this is something that they will introduce into it at a later date. Well, I really hope they will. So wait, wait, wait. This is Future Ed speaking now, and I found out that Image, it does actually do object recognition. It's called Smart Search, and we just type in the top here. Now if I type dogs, here we go. All of these are actually dogs. So that's pretty cool. And if I type in computer, well, here's a bunch of computers. So, so far, so good. Object recognition is working fine. So let's see how well it does if I type in the word cat. Is it going to do a Google and give us loads of dogs or will it only give me the cats that I have in the photographs? OK, so the first one actually is a cat, but all the rest seem to be dogs. So it's doing a Google. Anyway, back to previous Ed. So to have a look at how both um, Image and Google Photos handle people, I think I'll upload some photographs of some people here. I think before we actually upload any new photographs, I'm going to delete everything out of both Google Photos and Image that we know Google Photos didn't date properly. And then basically all of the photos will be matching with the correct dates and we'll upload some people and see how both handle that. So as you can see in Image, when we're deleting photos, we just select what we want, whether it's the date or individual photos, and then just click on the trash can icon in the top right hand corner. No, all of the photos haven't disappeared. If I refresh, we can just see everything now, starting on June 2021. If we were to accidentally delete a photo, we'll find it in the trash folder here and we can restore any photo we want to. OK, so let's jump across to Google Photos now and we'll delete the photos here. Um, we only have to click once here because all of them are on the same date. Exactly the same method as image. We just select what we want and delete it. 
a couple more warnings here than there is an image and okay all those are deleted again we're starting at june 2021 and again the trash folder is where the deleted photos go image is identical in that fact now can you see anything different here that google photos has that image doesn't well google photos is advertising to us you can see there with a 20 percent off valentine's day deal well image doesn't have any of that back over on image here we can see no ads here well i guess you could take that as a good thing or a bad thing depending on your point of view now there is one thing i think i prefer with google photos i prefer the larger font size for the dates i just think it's a bit clearer like this june 2021 stands out nicely on image i think it's just a little bit small of course it's no deal breaker now one thing i like about image that google photos doesn't have is we can actually change to dark mode see that little moon icon up there if we click onto that it changes to dark mode and now that's something that we don't have on google photos there's nothing there i did look through all of the settings and i can't find any way in the interface of being able to change google photos into dark mode now of course there are workarounds and they basically involve installing a plugin into your actual browser to better make the page dark mode it says here we have to install night eye but really not very good image is much better that we can actually do it from the actual app now i think this looks really really nice i much prefer dark mode myself you know let me know in the comments guys you know do you prefer dark mode or light mode i definitely think this looks better so i've downloaded some random celebrities into a folder so i can upload them to both image and google photos to see how they deal with faces so let's upload them now we can see them uploading but to actually see them on the page we need to refresh it okay so there they are in image now let's do the same in google photos so i'll select the same photos and upload them now it's going to take a little bit longer to upload because these are uploading to the cloud on image i hadn't put it through a reverse proxy so it's just uploading locally so obviously that was quicker and in google photos the page just refreshed itself and the photos appeared okay so actually it's been 24 hours since i uploaded these photos and we can see here on google photos we're getting a memories feature so we can see spotlight on a day here from photo from new york in 2005 and a glimpse of thursday which is actually when i uploaded all these celebrity pictures now there's one thing that's different from how these photos uploaded if we look here we've got this photo here dated august 2023 and this one june 2022 now if we go across to image well this picture here is august 2023 but the june one isn't here it's actually bunched in with these photos that are up at the top here so if i actually click onto the photograph here we can see the date is the 8th of february 2024 but clicking on the same photo in google photos again it's got a different date now i'm not sure what these date differences are in google photos and image not really a big deal i'm not too fussed about it now one thing that is a bit weird for me with google photos is if i click on to explore here i don't have any people here there's no way in google photos for me and i'll explain why in a moment i can't see people grouped together based on facial recognition and also on the side here there's no map for the locations of the actual photographs now before making this video i hadn't really ever used google photos before but i knew it was something that was meant to be one of the main features about it and if i click onto settings here there's absolutely no way of being able to turn on either now we've got memories here but nothing else now apparently that's because i live in the uk and over on this side of the world apparently we have much stricter privacy rules and so this isn't something that's allowed in google photos now i'm sure that the machine learning does exactly the same it looks at this but probably just doesn't display the results in order to fulfill some eu law now for you guys watching anyone else in the eu is this just a uk thing or is it in the whole of europe that we don't have this feature or am i just missing somewhere on the settings where i can actually unlock this anyway so i can't really compare how it groups faces but i can show you how image uses this feature and how well it's actually working so if i click on to explore now we can see here it's identified these people so if we look at the first one here here's all the jessica alba photos and if i click on this one for instance if i move over the people bit here it shows me where it identified the face so let's go back 
Oh yeah, and obviously I could actually name this and then it will display the name under the face. And so obviously next we've got Jean-Claude Van Damme here. Now, an interesting thing is if I go back to here and click onto this one, you can see it's a very blurry face. And looking at this, we think, well, that's Jean-Claude Van Damme. Why the blurry face? Well, if we open it, so this photograph has been identified twice, one from Jean-Claude Van Damme, which is in the correct folder. But also if I move to the right here, those blurry faces are just the audience. In the film, I think this was Kickboxer or something, or maybe Bloodsport, I'm not sure. So anyway, if I wanted to, I could just merge this into the Jean-Claude Van Damme or just hide the person altogether. I'm going to hide the person altogether. Okay, so there we've got our Mike Tyson photographs. And here's the pictures of Darnay Gurria or Michonne from The Walking Dead. So we can see here the photo facial recognition seems to work pretty well. Now we can certainly see here there's quite a few faces that Image hasn't picked up, such as Norman Reedus and Andrew Lincoln. Okay, so in fact, I think I know why this isn't working correctly, and it's actually nothing to do with Image. Now, what got me thinking is this photograph here, where we had these blurry faces in the background. What Image does is actually group faces on how many that it recognizes that are the same. So on this picture, I think there was either three or four, which gave us that blurry face. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the administration and then to settings. And just to see if this is the case, I'm going to go back to facial recognition. And at the bottom here, under minimum recognized faces, I'm going to change that to two. So with that changed as two, theoretically now we'll get Andrew Lincoln, but we won't get these other guys here from The Walking Dead. So let's force the job to start now. Right, so let's have a look at the results. And there we have it. We've got Andrew Lincoln, two photos of him. So that was why all the people weren't showing up. So it seems that facial recognition is actually working perfectly. But in fact, we can actually tweak and fine tune the machine learning settings as well. So if we go back and have another look at the machine learning settings here, where this is quite interesting, we can actually choose the machine that's doing the machine learning. So obviously this could be done on a different computer and under facial recognition here this can be toggled on and off and here we can actually choose the facial recognition model to use now the one at the top is the kind of heaviest one it uses the most resources down to the bottom using the fewest i find the default models pretty good it's fairly swift and it works well but it's nice that we can actually choose other models as well choosing the one that best fits our needs and whilst we're here We've got the maps and GPS settings here, which again can be turned on and off. Now it's a shame I can't really show you the same things in Google Photos. So the next thing probably to move on to is creating albums. So in Google Photos, we just create an album, name it, and then add photos to it. So we'll just add some dog photos here, just selecting which ones we want. And then that adds the photos to the album. And then when we look in the album on Google Photos, we can rename it, we can share it and delete it. I can't see a way we can actually change the cover on this. I'm sure there must be a way of doing it. But no, I can't see how to. So let's go and look at the same on image. Let's click onto albums, add an album and add the title. And again, we select the photos. It looks pretty much identical, just selecting the photos we want, then clicking onto done. And let's click back here and clicking here. Well, we only get the option to delete the album. But if we go into the album at the top here, we can add more photos. We can share, delete and download the album. And here we can actually set the album cover. So if I didn't want the album cover to be what it is, I could just say, right, I want this picture to be the cover and it changes it to what we want it to be. So personally, I think that Image probably does this better than Google Photos. I don't know, um, what do you guys think? Now sharing, to actually share photos, obviously we need to have someone to share it with. On Google Photos here, if I wanted to share this album. So with Google Photos, I can either share this with various people or create a link here, or it looks like I can share it on Facebook or Twitter. So let's have a look at how Image deals with the same. So for image to do this, if we click on to share here, 
Well, we can share the link here where we can describe what it is. We can make it that it requires a password to see the album. And we can turn off whether people can actually download it or not. And an interesting thing here is we can actually allow people to upload photos into our shared album. And we can also set for how long the links actually last for. We can set it to expire from anything from 30 minutes up to 30 days. So with that done, we just click create link. And you can see here, this is a local link because I haven't reverse proxied this yet, but with a reverse proxy and linking image into a domain, obviously this would be a publicly accessible link. And of course, we'll be looking at that in the setup video. So I think really, image wins on sharing here well certainly with the public link anyway being able to actually put passwords on expiration that kind of thing i don't think it can be done in google photos if it can then please correct me in the comments below so clicking on the sharing tab here shows us all of the shared albums that we've shared with other people and obviously for me i've only got the one here because i've only shared one also, going back into the shared album here, we can actually add more users. I don't have any at the moment, but if you set up users in image, you can actually share directly with other users who have accounts. Moving from the sharing tab back to the albums tab, here as well we can see that the album's actually shared. This album was only shared with a link, but obviously, like I said earlier, if we had more users, we could share that way. So before doing that, I'd have to make another user which I do by going up to administration here and then clicking create user, set up the user and I could even give a quota if I wanted to. And now you can see I've got two users. So now on image going to sharing, I could actually add this to a user on the actual image server. So we have a choice between users on the server or using links for people who don't have an account on the server. Okay, so if we look at the map here, we just get a world map and any photos that are geotagged or we've actually tagged ourselves because obviously you can tag a photo so obviously this is japan here so we can just click on here add location and just look for japan and now when we look on the map we can see here it puts like a little kind of thumbnail of the photo onto the map now i don't know what that is compared to with google photos because obviously being in the UK, I can't do that. Now, one thing that Google Photos has got, like I think I said earlier, is it's got these memories where it shows us photos from the past. And on image, we've got the same feature we can see here at the top. It says this photo was taken four years ago. So we've got the memory features on image as well. And this can actually be turned on and off if we go to the account settings here and go to memories, we can actually turn this off if that's something we don't want to have. Oh, look at that photo there. Windows XP, hey? Look at that very powerful computer. And anyway, photos we want to make favorite, we can just click on favorite here. We can download them, um, zoom in, zoom out, delete, archive, and basically add to albums, etc. So it's a very capable photo program. And if we look in the favorites here, we can see that photo I just tagged as a favorite. Okay guys, so that's an overview of how to actually use image and I think from that you can decide whether it's something you want to install or not. If so, check out my quick and easy install video which will show you just how to do that as well as reverse proxying it or putting it through a Cloudflare tunnel. And I'll upload that video either Friday or Saturday. But for now guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please hit the like button Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And as always, I want to give a really big thank you to all of my patrons and supporters out there. Thank you so much, guys, for all of your support. Without you, I really couldn't make these videos, and it means the world to me to have your support. Anyway, it's getting late here, and it's time for me to go. But whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good, and I'll catch you in the next video.